I'm Ross, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about making your scenes inside Element 3D realistic. So once you get your scenes all set up inside the Element interface, uh, make sure you have a floor uh, because this tutorial is just going to be talking about making your CG objects realistic. We're not going to be integrating it into side uh, footage or anything like that. Um, make sure you pick an HDR, preferably one with a uh, an actual scene, not like in a studio environment where it's just lights. Uh, you're gonna hit okay. You're gonna get something like this. Uh, for speed's sake, I already picked my camera angle and I put a light inside the scene. Uh, so once you get to this point, you're gonna want to turn on shadows on your light, make sure they're on. And shadow diffusion makes your shadows softer. So just remember that as we get inside the tutorial. Um, so we're going to turn on shadows. As you can see my shadows are already soft because I have 200 here. If I turn it to zero you'll see this is probably what you're going to see once you turn on your shadows. So for my scene 200 was a good number. So you just want to see what type of look you want. If your light's closer uh, to the look you're going for is probably going to be a sharper shadow. So just get like a reference uh, picture of what you're aiming for because it definitely helps. Uh, for shadows definitely go under ray trace because if you go under shadow mapping it doesn't look as good and it does weird stuff to your model. So make sure ray trace definitely uh, more realistic as far as uh, going for realism. Uh, make sure you have some samples to adjust from uh, for your shadows because if you turn this to zero and this to one, as you can see, our shadows don't look very good. So turn up your sample count. For my scene, it was three and two. That gave me some good results. I can turn it up even further to smooth this out even more if I wanted to, but I don't want to slow down my uh, render yet. So next step you want to do is turn on ambient inclusion. This will give you those dark shadows that you want. It will give you that contact shadow and it will give you your shadows on your model itself. <clears throat> yeah, so if I turn this on and off, you can see what it's doing. especially right here, if you really look at the contact shadow. All right, next step uh, is just to turn on some depth of field with the camera. So uh, once you set up your camera, this will be pretty easy. You just turn on depth of field. And depending on how close your camera is to the model, is you're gonna adjust your uh, focus distance. For me, 350 worked out pretty good. So normally you're going to stay around like either to 100 and to 1500. That's usually the range I'm usually at when I mess with the camera focal distance. So try to stay uh, fairly close to your model. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to blur either the background or the foreground if you're far away. All right. So next step that I did, I uh, created a vignette and then I added a curves and that's all there is to it. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.